So you want to write a piece of choral music. Maybe you have a text that for a long time you've been wishing to set. Maybe you have a friend who's involved with the choir or sings in the choir and they've asked you to write a piece for them. Or maybe you've just never written anything for a choir before and you think it'd be a fun thing to try. Whatever the reason, I think there are some practical considerations that you should think about before you embark on the writing process. Because if your aim is for the piece to be performed <clears throat> at least once, or possibly your hope is for it to be performed more than once, or even, dare I say, become a nightingale, let's say, that rarest of birds that's received widely and is performed and becomes part of the canon of choral music that's performed across the globe, then you need to take off your composer's hat for a second and I believe you need to imagine yourself as a commissioner. And what they're primary, primarily concerned with is how is this piece of music going to work? Of course they want a beautiful piece of music to be created, of course uh, they want a skillful and delightfully innovative way of setting text and for it to be widely received and challenging and engaging and all the stuff that us as composers are interested in creating. But at the point they engage you as a composer, they're concerned about how that piece of music is going to work. And I think we should also be concerned about how that piece of music is going to work. Well, how is it going to work throws up a lot of questions. How will it work in the context of a programme? How long is it going to be? That in, in itself, how will it work in the context of a programme throws up lots of questions as well. How long is the piece going to be? Um, what text are you going to set? What are the forces that you might use? Who is it for? These are all really obvious questions, but I think a careful and proper consideration of those questions throws up other considerations and practical concerns that will really, really help your piece of music become a piece of music that at least has the best chance possible of receiving repeat performances and getting performed in the first place. I mean, if we take any of those questions and look at a little, a little bit at one of those, you'll see the sort of thing I mean. How will it work in the context of a programme? So how long is it going to be? The BBC Proms is a good example of that. Um, they traditionally, as we all know, at the beginning of a BBC Symphony Orchestra concert, there will often be a piece of 10 minute music at the beginning because they have, let's say, a short form classical symphony, a Haydn symphony is only 25 minutes, something like that. And they need another piece of music that will work with that. And so there are often 10 minute pieces of music that work just in terms of timing. So just very practical consideration, timings of the piece of music makes a massive difference as to how likely it is that it might get commissioned you might think, I've no idea how long that piece is going to be until I've started, but you might think, but I do know that I want quite big forces, let's say you want it to have an orchestral accompaniment, or what are the other kinds of pieces that that might easily be paired with, and how long are those pieces? It might easily be paired with that because of your style of writing, or it might easily be paired with that because of the subject matter of the piece that you're writing. But nevertheless, if it's easily paired with a few of the of those nightingales, of those, of those pieces that are generally performed an awful lot, how long are those pieces? And therefore, how long would your piece um, need to be in order to be an effective accompaniment to that? The next question I think I asked was, what are the forces? What would you like to write for? Of course, that's an important question. If you know there's a particular set of instrumentation, there's a particular instrumentation or set or arrangement of voices that you'd like to write for, then have a think about other pieces that might use similar forces or a similar arrangement of voices, how long are those pieces? Then suddenly you can answer all the other questions again, once again with those. There's another a couple of friends of mine who are composers who do it another way around. They're, they're sort of quite canny. They, they, they specifically seek out pieces that have unusual arrangements, uh, unusual instrumentation or um, things that programmers might balk at setting like uh, Stravinsky's Les Nos with four pianos and percussion. Once you've garnered all of that together, it would be lovely if there was, there's only a 25 minute piece of music, so it would be lovely if there was another 10 or 15 minute piece of music that used the same forces. I mean, all of this might be relevant for you because you might say, well, I don't want to do any of that, I just want to write a piece of polyphonic um, choral music um, without any instrumentation at all. But that also brings us on to the next question, which is who, who for? Do you have a specific choir in mind? If not, you should probably have a specific choir in mind. Uh, and what do they do? What kinds of things do they do? What makes them interesting? See if you can get in touch with someone from that choir. You might think, well, there's no way they'd... But I, I bet you they'd be very interested to speak to someone who's offering to write a piece of music for them. And more than that, is offering to engage them in the process and let them steer it a little bit and take on board their comments. Because if they feel ownership of it as well, they'll be much more likely to perform it. The other thing is, who is it for? What 
is it for a, what's the choir like? Are they a professional choir? Are they a youth choir, community choirs? It, Basically, if you've truly considered these questions, you might think, well, I already know a lot of the answers to that, but truly consider those questions, write them down. It genuinely imagined that you were not a composer, but you were in charge of commissioning this. You will essentially have a commissioning agreement for yourself or a list of specifications, um, which will, I mean, you'll definitely have a much clearer idea of the kind of music, the kind of piece that you're going to be writing and who it's for and what it's for, how it's going to be performed and what it's going to be performed with, how long it's going to be. I think they're really useful things to think about. And I'm not one of these composers that believes that you should just write music for yourself and sod the rest of them. If it never gets out there, um, it doesn't matter because it's true art. I think, of course, that's a massively important part of the process, but I do not believe that considering um, and courting some practical considerations is in any way diminishing to the art. I mean, the, hi the history of music and art is peppered with examples of people giving themselves incredibly stringent um, parameters within which to work. Of course, initially it's restrictive, but I think within that restriction you can find huge amounts of positivity and creativity and it can be incredibly inspiring, I, I find. So I don't think it needs to be a negative thing at all. I think you need to attack it in a positive way um, and see if you can partner up with a choir. Because I think it will just give your piece a much more chance of being performed, which ultimately is hopefully what we're all about. Um, so anyway, after you've considered all of that, put your composing hat on and do some great work. Good luck.